It's going to be like this. Hold on. You generation, you're killing me, man. You literally are killing me here. Check out today's piece of... Ugh. God, I fucking hate that dude's voice. Oh, shit, I just dragged everything. Hold up, fuck. I don't want all my windows. I just want this one tab. Ah. <sighs> All right, God Howard. I hope you're fucking happy, motherfucker. DJ Aftershock with the two. Can't wait for this year's Million Meg March. I have no idea what the fuck that is, but hey, man, I hope you enjoy it. Then Digital DNA with the two. Do you have a favorite porn star? Um, Not off like the top of my head, to be completely honest. I don't know. I watch a lot of like I guess amateur, not necessarily like porn star shit. So I don't know actually. I'd have to like think about it, and I don't really want to look up like fucking porn star names right now. Rackenzie with the five, which seems a bit crazy. You're going number one on a glacier, running into a fire, or picking up black girls with pics of yourself in a clan outfit. My friend is odd. I don't know. I mean, peeing on a glacier, what the fuck's wrong with that, bro? I mean, it may end up in, like, somebody's bottled water at some point, but I don't really know if that's a big deal. So, DJ Aftershock with the two million Meg March equals Women's March via Pink Hats. Oh, I don't give a fuck about that type of shit. So, I hope they have a good time. I don't even know if that thing's even still popular at this point. It's a fan art. It's a fate servant design. Oh my god. It's like, bro. Jesus Christ. Now he sounds like a fucking femboy. Of the Greek figure Icarus. The guy who... Yeah, Icarus. Proves wax wings aren't a very good idea. <laughs> Here, he's a lancer. And it's fun trying to imagine what how his legend fuck? would affect him as a heroic spirit. Dude, what the fuck is this dude's speech pattern? Thank you so much. Welcome back to Otaku Daikun. Die here. As this video's title suggests, we'll be discussing the effect of justifying fan service seen in anime. What I mean by that is what happens when creators try to put good reasons in the story for why their characters wear the skimpy outfits they do, or why they- They don't put good reasons in it, they just know the fucking sex sells to a bunch of weebs. Get into those fan service situations. My channel is dedicated to defending anime and its ability to explore these themes in the face of criticism. <laughs> what a noble fucking cause, man. Oftentimes, this criticism comes in the form of objectification. No, God Howard is not done with this shit, unfortunately. ...or condemning the pesky male gaze. Hand in hand with this... Those pesky male gaze, bro. <sighs> Go away. Special snowflakes and outrage mobs try to point out how ridiculous and impractical fan service is. Specifically... No, I, I I don't really think. What did he describe that as? Outrage mobs try to point out. Outrage mobs. No, I don't have to be an outrage mob to point out that a bitch wearing fucking literal silk strings in front of her fucking nipples going into a war zone is fucking retarded. That's not an outrage mob, bro. That's just pointing out something looks fucking stupid how ridiculous and impractical fan service is specifically the outfits characters wear it's the basic observation that wearing say bikini armor wouldn't help someone in combat offering no protection from arrows or anything really why would anyone in their right mind jump into battle so unprotected so what's wrong with pointing that out the assumption being that creators should refrain from such designs and stick to more realistic elements the thing is, pointing out how unrealistic these outfits are is pointless. Fans of this stuff are- So is putting them in the fucking outfits in the first place. 
So two can play at that game, my G. Obviously aware that bikini armor and the like are unrealistic. In fact, that's often why they enjoy such things, to escape the unfortunate restrictions of reality. It's fantasy, and if you follow the rule of cool, it's no wonder that creators and fans would prioritize visual aesthetics over practical realism. The fiction we consume is always a matter of selective realism. Any creative work picks and chooses what aspects of reality to include and which ones to defy. Thus, realism in fiction is actually just another creative choice rather than an expectation. More realistic fantasies are a matter of taste and aren't objectively better because of how realistic they are. Plus, even those works have logic that defies reality. For instance, a more realistic military shooter will still use medkits and other items to instantly recover health. That's not realistic at all. This shit is so fucking boring. Oh, I need to close out a Halo. Whoops. Oh, but we put up with it because it's video game logic and makes for a more fun game. Fantasies, no matter how realistic the armor, still feature magic, dragons, and other monsters. Characters often don't wear helmets because if they did, we wouldn't get to see their faces. I brought this concept up in a previous video regarding Final Fantasy's Tifa and selective realism. Her new outfit for the remake had her sporting spats and a sports bra beneath her tank top, which many so? people claim would be way more comfortable for women punching and kicking like her. But you know what? If she can punch giant robots without breaking her knuckles, I'm pretty sure she could handle some jiggle. Meanwhile- <laughs> Is this dude mad that Tifa's titties don't bounce enough when she punches in the Final Fantasy remake? He's upset that she's wearing a fucking bra? Oh my god. <laughs> Holy fuck, dude. While we've got someone like Barrett standing out like a sore thumb with a machine gun for an arm and why what what aspect of Barrett stands out like a sore thumb I would hate to assume that it has anything to do with the color of his skin and not the content of his character intimidating actual Shinra employees on a train and yet we're expected to believe that was supposed to be a fucking <laughs> okay I'm not going to get into the whole racial thing. People don't immediately suspect who the members of Avalanche are. Then there's Cloud's luscious hair. It's a style that would require plenty of product and maintenance, yet we never see Cloud beautifying himself in the morning. It's still... Oh my god. ...looks great, even as he carves through monsters and survives explosions. In fact, the only time I hear people bring up realism is when it has to do with Tifa's sex appeal. That's where outrage mobs draw the line on how far they can suspend their disbelief. What the fuck is there? What? Bro, the outrage mobs didn't fucking win when it came to Tifa because she still has massive fucking tits. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? I don't know, man. Uh... Digital DNA with a five, the act man put out a video today requesting any sort of quantum TV bad evidence you have. A call to anybody who's building a big file on the dude. Big W. That's good, man. Hopefully some more people come forward. And Rakinzi with a two, forget my friend. The real crazies watch this. Oh, 100 percent man. This is like some weird fucking type of content that Attracts a very peculiar type of person. Smoke show with the two. You c wait. You see the five hundred dollar Tifa statue twerking on, twerking on a sword. No, but I ordered the Tifa statue of her in like the purple dress or whatever. I have a feeling that's gonna stonk. So I bought one of those. It hasn't shipped yet. It's coming from like Japan in like a couple months. So I'm still waiting on it to actually get here, but. Yeah, I have a feeling that's going to stonk long term, so I bought one. I'm just going to keep it on ice for a couple years and see if I can flip it. My point is that practice whenever like the new uh Final Fantasy like part 2 comes out. Decality and realism are not requirements for quality fiction. Rather, they are merely one more aesthetic creators can implement to create the kind of fantasy they want to explore. Thus, stories don't need a good reason for their characters to dress in outrageous ways. 
Sometimes the fun fashion is all that matters. Take the classic 80s anime Dirty Pair. It's heroes K and Yuri. <laughs> Dirty Pair? Yo, that sounds like somebody's fucking nuts. King of Weaves with the two. We just started watching Better Call Saul 10 out of 10. Agreed. And I've been chiefing with the two dudes. Speaks like text-to-speech. But, yeah. It's just... This whole fucking channel is like a complete fucking abortion. And Sam the Madman with the two. Help God Howard has my kid for black. Oh shit, man. Are you going to be making the next $50 donation to recommend one of these fucking videos? At God Howard's request? Unfortunate. Our trouble consultants who tra This man is a fucking menace. Travel the cosmos, taking on all manner of missions, most of which involve space gunfights, explosions, violent robots, etc. The majority of the time, they're wearing these revealing two-piece outfits for absolutely no reason other than they're attractive. For the often they are silly and outrageous things that happen in Dirty Pair, their outfits fit the theme quite reasonably. But even <laughs> yeah. Desperate sex appeal to lonely fucking weebs. Oski Woski with the two, let it be known that God Howard is still a pay pig. That's right, man. That's not begging. That's advertisement. Ooh, fuck you, motherfucker! That's what DSP says to him every single night. And he still plays into it. Even if it were a more serious anime, I wouldn't demand the creators suddenly justify the wardrobe. It's just cool and sexy. Though if I had to give a reason for why they'd wear such uniforms, it'd be because Kay and Yuri might benefit from using their looks to distract men. We do see this happen in at least one instance, but I don't think that really counts since this method of distraction is hardly used. In the end, they wear their costume because of its fashion, and I believe that's worth standing by. Nonetheless, there are creators who include deliberate, in-universe reasons for their characters' actions and presentation. Let's look at a few examples and see whether these narrative justifications really justify anything, or if they're just half-baked excuses to get scantily clad gals on screen. The most iconic example has got to be the character Quiet from Metal Gear Solid. Yo, what does it tell you? Alright, so let's, let's break this down real quick. Okay? When Kojima had to answer to the people at Konami... We got to focus on, like, a woman's body, okay? So, like, while Kojima had to work under Konami, we got, like, close-up shots of a female video game character in revealing situations, let's call it. Whereas when Kojima went independent and could make whatever game he wanted to, he chose to instead focus on the naked body of Norman Fetus. Let it be known that Kojima... Might be batting for the home team, is all I'm going to say. Smoke show with the two Google Tifa twerking statue off screen. All right, I'll do it on my phone real quick. Um, fuck. Oh. Shit. Give me one second. I'm going to keep reading. Uh, Fu Hao sucked me dry with the 20. Bro, Griffin, just take me back. Wait, out back and end my suffering? I don't want to see this trash and my PC died, so I have to buy a new one. And guess what? The motherboard fried everything. Damn, that fucking sucks. What brand of PC did you get? The HP or whatever? I think you said. That fucking sucks. I'm sorry to hear that. Hopefully it's covered under warranty. In 2023 Perfect Dark with the 5 Weeb Logic, its censorship did not have titties bounce and not move at all. But blood being censored in a hentai game is not real censorship. Yeah. Or the fucking pussy being censored in a hentai game. Like, bro, this is the thing I love about weebs, okay? Let's really go down on fucking weebs real quick. And just make them feel like even more fucking dirt. Like, these motherfuckers talking about, oh my god, it's censorship. Like, these bitches cry about censorship all day, but what the fuck do they jerk their tiny little dicks to at the end of every day? They go and watch hentai, where literally everything's fucking blurred out. Like, you literally can't make that shit up, bro. They bitch about fucking censorship, and then go beat their meat to the only form of fucking censored porn on the entire internet. 
Like, fucking cope and seethe, you fucking weebs. <laughs> like, what the fuck are they talking about? Fucking censorship, bro. They literally watch the only porn in the world that's fucking censored. I don't know, dude. Shit's crazy. She's a woman who spends most of the game clad in a bikini top, exposing her stomach and cleavage to an ensemble of grisly military men. Rather than just using this design because it's hot, Hideo Kojima... Isn't it because she, like, breathes through her skin or some shit like that? ...gave quite a backstory that explains not only why she wears a bikini top, but also why it's necessary for her to do so. Basically, she was once injured so badly she needed a special parasite to repair her body. One side effect of this treatment is that she now breathes, drinks, and absorbs nutrients through her skin. In that regard, if she were to cover her body up, she could suffocate. Personally, I think this... Choke me. This is a really fun concept, but let's not kid. <laughs> Remember, this is under Kojima with Konami. But as soon as he, like, went independent, we started seeing this type of shit with Norman Fetus, bro. We went from a female rolling around in the fucking rain to watching a dude's bare ass in the fucking shower. I'm telling you, bro, something sus. Hit ourselves. Nobody thinks that Quiet's design came organically from the idea of a photosynthesizing human. Rather, I find that hard to believe given that the only character with such a feature in the story is an attractive woman. I mean, where are all the shirtless dudes who were infected by that parasite? It's obvious that, for the developers, this was a narrative ex What the fuck am I watching on screen, bro? ...excuse to include a fanservice character. Though that's not to say she exists only for fanservice. I'd much rather play her than any of Metal Gear's dudes. Now, I can't say for sure whether Kojima introduced Quiet's backstory in order to dodge criticism, or just because he thought it'd make for fun lore. In either case, I can safely say that none of the people who are offended by Quiet's design are in any way appeased by the added narrative justification. Rather, I bet a lot of them interpreted her story as a shabby way of forcing an objectified woman into the game, a way for the devs to pat themselves on the back for being creative. I feel as though Quiet's backstory made Snowflakes more offended than they would have been if Kojima just admitted, we put her in the game because she's hot. Sometimes it's not even the original creators, but the fans themselves who use story to defend fan service. Such is the case for Momo in My Hero Academia. Her superhero outfit features side boob and a midriff cutout, exposing her skin quite gorgeously. Isn't she like fucking 14 or some shit? Isn't that like My Hero's whole appeal? It's like a bunch of like fucking 14 year olds in like sexual ass fucking costumes or whatever. I don't fucking know, bro. All I know is when I was on Twitter, this show had so much fucking porn for it. And all these fucking sickos know, like, all the characters are, like, fucking 13 and 14. Woke complaints have actually gotten this outfit censored in some works she features in. Leading yeah, because isn't she, like, literally a fucking child? More cultured fans to try and justify the exposed skin as being integral to her quirk as a hero. <laughs> <coughs> That's right. The cultured fans are going to explain to everyone else why the fucking literal canonically teenage fucking character needs to flash her fucking titties to everybody. Holy shit. See, her power is creation, being able to transmutate objects from the lipids in her skin. It's like she did. Yeah, she has skin in other places than her fucking tits. Digs into her skin and pulls out whatever she needs in a given moment. For that to work, it helps to have patches of skin readily exposed so she doesn't tear apart her outfit every time she uses it. Damn, it's almost like she has skin on her fucking arms. I don't remember if this was ever canon logic presented in the story itself, but it definitely makes logical sense. Of course, this is also the same anime where a character's entire power is that he's... pants. Regardless, the outfit still has its critics. Some that's right, man. We gotta we gotta wait for those cultured fans to show up and tell us why it's okay for the fourteen year old to flash her titties to everybody. Gunslinger with the two character animation skills minimal. What is that? I have no idea, man. This is like some fucking my hero bullshit. 
This show is so fucking ass, by the way. It's like literally the worst parts of any fucking generic anime you could think about balled up into one. Some of whom reason that all she needs are exposed thighs. Rather than practicality, the exposed parts of her costume are chosen to be places of sexual interest. Velvet from Tales of Berseria is a character who also dresses rather provocatively. In the context of the narrative, she's a demon called Aetherian, one who can devour and absorb the powers of other demons. Is this like a fucking PS2 game? Demons. After a grueling isolation, where she spent her time trapped in a dungeon, battling and consuming demons while dressed in mere rags, she finally gets her chance to escape. When she comes across a storeroom in the dungeon. Bro, so this is the average audience that plays like these really shitty, like fucking Bandai weeb games. Interesting. Dungeon, she loots it for clothing and weapons. Thus, her official outfit appears to be thrown together from various scraps of fabric, only covering the really bare minimum for decency. Her exposure is directly acknowledged in the story, especially when traversing regions covered in snow. People seem to worry about how cold she must be, but in reality, her demonic body is resistant to extreme temperatures. Personally, I think her outfit is perfect because she. <laughs> of course, she fucking do. She intentionally gives off a fuck it attitude, considering her primary goal is to get revenge on the guy who killed her brother. After all the crap she's been through, she's not worried about guys lusting after her. And for all I know, she's actually more comfortable with less clothing, considering she spent so long half naked in a prison cell. The way. <laughs> what the fuck is this shit? she's handled, and the fact that the game lets you wear an assortment of different outfits, seems to have kept this game safe from mass outrage. Fire Force, on the other hand, is detested especially for its narrative logic. Tamaki Kotatsu suffers from a fictional condition called the Lucky Lecher Lure, which works almost like a curse. Her luck and clumsy nature are so bad that she winds up in raunchy predicaments by accident. She'll have wardrobe malfunctions, or fall with her jugs right into guys' hands and such. Oh no, because that that happens all the time, guys. Don't you just hate it when you slip and then all of a sudden a dude's fingering your asshole? To my knowledge, it's a pretty shallow explanation, with no real lore to justify how she got such a condition, nor how it really works. Plus, the fact that none of the guys have this condition really screams the creators just wanted fan service, making more of a joke than an excuse. Rather than just having spontaneous moments of fan so Wolf JRA with the fine what's up Griffin hope you're doing great also this dude sounds like a Yu-Gi-Oh villain explaining a trap yeah kinda he does give off that vibe spend it way too much time explaining dumb shit service for the sake of it Tamaki has been criticized for being fan service incarnate regardless of how it's contextualized though a character exposing herself in this way was always going to draw ire from people who hate fan service even more self-aware, however, is the anime literally called Bikini Warriors. It's an etchy that- Bruh. Just a reminder, guys. This unironically turns people on. This. I don't know if anyone's ever seen, like, an actual leg before. But I'm pretty sure somebody's thighs, like, don't have a, like, literal fucking tumor sticking out, covering their fucking pussy lips, bro. Like, what the fuck is this shit? But a reminder, man, this literally turns some people on. A fucking drawing. Obviously just wants to lavish in the lewd, but does so while being a parody. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, dude. Since magic can do all sorts of stuff in a fantasy world, and the idea of- <laughs> This shit's so fucking cringe. If enchanted armor isn't anything new, why not have bikini armor that gets its protection exclusively from magic? Basically, a party of female adventurers go shopping for equipment and- Yo, this is like one of those, um, pictures where it's like real life- versus um instagram hold up fuck so we got real life here versus instagram real life instagram <laughs> what the fuck
real life Instagram. <laughs> Jesus Christ, bro. This shit is so fucking corny. And at first, they naturally despise the bikini armor and go for something more conventional. After being sold on its magical properties, however, the girls actually try it on and discover how much better it is than real armor. It's exceptionally silly, but with a show like this, would-be complainers know not to approach it because of how obviously exploitative it is. Yeah, the only people watching this shit have a fucking bottle of lotion on the other hand. In no way is it trying to be serious. Mushoku Tensei, however, actually finds a way to incorporate this outfit design more maturely. The character Viera recently debuted her bikini armor in the Mushoku Tensei anime, and this adaptation uses her outfit for the sake of the narrative. That dude's wearing fucking panties on his face. Ha 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 ha, so quirky, dude. That's so funny. So Sora with the two disguised voice sounds more like Kabuto and Orochi. Mm, I wouldn't say that. Orochimaru, definitely not. Fuhao sucked me dry with the tier 3 membership. Really appreciate it, man. Big ups. After years of being apart, Rudius reunites with his father, Paul, having no idea what happened while he was absent. Given Paul's... Bro, like, it literally zooms in on the fucking tits during the fight. Like, this is how blatantly obvious this shit is. They know exactly what the motherfuckers watching this type of shit want to see. It has nothing to do with anything else. They just want to see tits jiggle. Prior infidelity, Rudius observes Viera in the party and assumes she must be dressed so skimpy because Paul forced her to as a lech. Thankfully, this isn't the case at all. Though, given some of the weird stuff in this story, I don't think bikini armor really sticks out too much, but those who have read the light novels get some more clarity that the anime skips. Oh, some more clarity. Basically, Viera and her sister were once caught by bandits who used them like playthings. While it was traumatic, Viera came out of that incident strong, unlike her sister who is now terrified of men looking at her. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. Oh. Fuhao sucked me dry with the five women with armors hot changed my mind. I mean, you wouldn't be able to see like what they actually fucking look like, but I guess sure. Why not? Thus, for her sister's sake, Viera wears revealing armor to attract men's gaze and attention away from her sister. In other words, she objectifies herself for a compassionate cause. To be fair, most people who hate bikini armor likely pieced out from Mushoku Tensei right at the start for its perverted protagonist. But if it kept the same audience My Hero Academia has, I can guarantee this backstory wouldn't satisfy anyone who finds the armor offensive. There are dozens of other ways Viera could protect her sister, and it's obvious the bikini armor is just there because it's the most visibly satisfying solution. That said, I do appreciate the backstory, as it gives more development for a side character that I really enjoy. Oh my fucking god. To me, it's not an excuse for the fan service, but an excuse to feature the character more. Reflecting on these examples, I can certainly say that providing narrative justification for fan service does almost nothing to ease the minds of the offended. In most cases, it makes it worse. Bro, nobody is offended. It's just this shit is so fucking corny. It's like pitiful. I don't know. Like, I don't think anyone's getting offended over this type of shit. We just like to laugh at how fucking pitiful it makes you look when you're like, Oh my god, bro, look at those fake tits. They're not real, but they're real to me. It's like, I don't know, man. I don't understand how people are like claiming, oh, people are offended by this. No, I don't think anyone's offended by this shit. I think we just think it's fucking pathetic. 2023 Perfect Dark with the five bikini warriors, I thought... It was satire until I found out they're charging you the same price as a regular 30 minute anime. Every episode's like three minutes. Long. Really? What the fuck? Damn. Three minutes long. I guess they figure that's the average stroke time for the um anime enjoyer. Mohawk warrior with the two. Gonna assume this isn't ironic. No, it's not ironic. This motherfucker actually is like an avid defender of anime boobs, bro. 
Yeah, I'll go with the two look of active response to one boom on Halo Infinite. Oh, possibly. We'll see. I don't know how late I want to stay out tonight. For them. It's a lot like apologizing to snowflakes. It doesn't work because those people are looking to be offended. Forgiveness is often never a priority for them, and they'll instead take an apology as an admission of guilt or validate. That's right, guys. If you laugh at fucking big titties jiggling and the fact that grown men jerk their fucking dick to a drawing, then you're just a snowflake. ...of their complaints, which is what they're really looking for. Oh my god. Even so, that... I don't hate when stories try to elaborate on why characters are in lewd garments in situations. It's just that such justifications shouldn't be for outside critics, but rather for providing a richer narrative to fans. Bikini or not, Quiet is a more interesting character because of the whole photosynthesis thing. Viera's story gives us details about her familial relationships, as well as insight into her priorities. Yawn. It demonstrates her strength of will to overcome trauma, as well as her compassion toward loved ones. Everyone else and I can see how fan service was a priority from the start, but that doesn't mean giving characters a reason for it dampens the experience at all. My own personal conclusion is that creators should never feel burdened to justify their aesthetic choices, at least not to the woke crowds that immediately vilify them. In Sorry, bro. I'm woke. Instead, creators should only justify such choices when it makes for a more immersive and exciting story. Do it for the fans as expanded lore, not as a means of deflecting criticism. That's all I have to say on the matter for now. What I want to know from you viewers... Sorry guys, big titties should only be for the fans, not for the critics. ...is whether you've come across other examples of fan service being justified by story. Are the explanations silly, or do they help you appreciate the fan service even more? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Before I go ahead and... Mm, another 10 out of 10 video, man. So glad... So glad we watched that. All right. So. Let's do this first. We'll see. <laughs> uh, this should be funny. This, like, I saw this title earlier today. I haven't watched it yet, but this should be pretty entertaining. So. Tony is currently under investigation by the United <laughs> What the fuck did he just wiggle his fingers like that? Is he conjuring up the fucking investigation by like casting a fucking spell on him? Like what the fuck was that, dude? Sony is currently under investigation. <laughs> what the fuck? Sony is currently under investigation. Jesus fucking Christ. The United States government for some shady business dealings. At least that's what people on the internet keep claiming. Now, I want to talk about the fake news and what's actually going on because the real story to me is more interesting than the lies that people are trying to spread. Well, let's see if he keeps that same fucking energy. Lots of gamers, Dreamcast guy here. Now, obviously, the last couple of years have been very bonkers when it comes to business deals inside the gaming world. The entire industry continues to freaking explode. The fact that people have had lockdowns and have been stuck playing games indoors, I think that sort of helps it. But also, Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo seem to be trying to expand their power, expand their reach, making bigger exclusive games, bigger marketing deals. I I don't think video games have ever been so freaking mainstream and so talked about. But what's going on right now over the course of this recent time period is lots of acquisitions. Everybody is buying everything that's not nailed down if it has a price tag on it. But obviously just a couple months back, there was this big $3.6 billion deal of Bungie getting bought by Sony. But here's what's funny is that right now, the FTC, the Federal Trade Commission, has started to look into it. But where the debate seems to be happening is whether the United States government could legally block this, even if they wanted to, and would they want to. But let's check out why. Don't you guys love how, like, whenever it's Sony making an acquisition, oh, the government's just investigating it, but they don't have the power to block it. Meanwhile, Activision, oh my god, they're investigating it. It's basically a nail in the coffin for the Activision Blizzard deal with Micro... Like, it just shows you the fucking double standard here. 
Like on one hand, they're like, oh, they can't do anything about it versus, oh my God, it's doomed from the start, man. Why would they be investigating it unless there's an issue? <laughs> like, what the fuck, bro? Uh, you gotta love it, man. You gotta fucking love it. Only lads of the five I'm walking home won't be there until 4.30 or 4.13 a.m. All right, man. No worries. Sony is trying to buy the developer bun. You know, just enjoy that nice evening walk. I don't know. I've always liked walking late at night. I used to go and walk around like when I lived on campus at school. I used to walk around at like 3 a.m. in the morning to clear my head or whatever before I go to bed. And I'd walk for like an hour or two. I don't know. Personally, I like walking late at night. Bungie, the people who make the Destiny, <laughs> the Destiny. This is a $3.6 billion deal announced in January and comes at a time when the FTC has taken a more aggressive stance toward big tech mergers. Now, part of this entire story sort of revolves around this. Right now... So Midnight Mobile with the two, what the fuck is FTC doing? It's dumb and useless jealousy. It's just them acting like they actually give a fuck about, I don't know, dude, the FTC, the SEC, a lot of these like organizations we have in the U.S. for the government, like these agencies, just need to fucking go away. Like the FTC, goodbye. Fucking SEC, goodbye. Most of these agencies are a complete fucking waste of everyone's time. Perfect example. Companies keep trying to change these enormous sums of money. Like, truly consider this beyond all else. Like, we're in the gaming world, so we sort of think of things through the scope of the console wars and stuff, but really just to take that big step back and consider the fact that Facebook and freaking Twitter and stuff are selling and buying stuff for tens of billions, if so, sometimes like hundreds of billions of dollars. The United States government is not particularly liking that. They think that there's something shady that could easily happen, and they- Oh, bullshit. All the big tech companies literally are the ones who fund the current administration. They're just pretending they give a shit about it when they really don't. Only lads of the five that work at FedEx as a package handler? Oh, shit. Damn, you got an important job, though. FedEx does come in clutch, so keep up the good work, man. Your company is like the only one who actually delivers shit on time. So I guess the hard work is paying off, my G, but... Yeah, you do work some weird hours for that. My uh, friend in high school used to be like a box thrower and he would like go in at like 2 a.m. and then work until like 8. It was really weird, but yeah. They wouldn't be able to stop it. Well, what's been happening is that right now, the FTC is sort of investigating all of these big mergers inside of the gaming industry to make sure they don't violate antitrust law uh, basically everybody in america antitrust yeah everybody loves to throw that fucking term around none of these acquisitions even closely qualify as antitrust is obsessed with the free markets the fact that things need to fight fair if you make the best no if it was a free market there wouldn't be any ftc oversight product or in this case the best game you deserve to make the best money right that's pretty obvious but what they're trying to stop is unfair business practices unfair business practices like buying another company how is that an unfair business practice if theoretically microsoft bought every single other studio then there's no games to play there's no games to buy they literally can't buy every single video game studio. That's like literally financially impossible because literally anyone with a fucking computer can make a video game. It's like a commodity type skill. There is literally no way that Microsoft could control the entire video game industry. Plain and simple. Ah, you have to play on Xbox, which to the United States government, that's not fair. Now what sort of really began no, they, they don't give a fuck what console people play on. No. Like, what type of fucking dumbass argument is that? The mobile gaming industry is like two times the size of fucking console gaming. Nobody gives a fuck what console is winning the fucking console war, dude. What they're going to look at is like, oh, well, you know, console's 20% of the market. And, you know, there's 80% other opportunities for people to play video games. It's not a monopoly. Like, only... It, let's say Microsoft did buy Nintendo and Sony. Okay? 
The government's not going to look at it and be like, oh my god, bro, there's only one video game console for people to play on. We can't allow that. They're going to be like, oh, no, the video game industry, you know, this this industry's fucking huge. Nintendo, Microsoft, and Sony only make up about 30% of the entire overall industry, which isn't even half, so we can't even call this a monopoly or antitrust. So, yeah, whatever. We'll go with it. That's what's going to happen, dude. Like... How is Microsoft allowed to control 70% or upwards of all like computer operating systems if antitrust is so fucking prevalent? That's what really blows my mind, dude. Like why are like Apple not constantly getting in trouble for um controlling the vast majority of the US cell phone market? It's because at the end of the day, the government doesn't give a fuck. They just pretend like they do. Plain and simple, man. Oski Oski with the two. Oh, no, I'm scared. Not Sony and Microsoft. I know. You know, it would be a real tragedy if, you know, there was only an Xbox to play video games on. Yeah, I'm a gamer. Uh, Fu House suck me dry with the five. I got to go. Hope you guys have fun. I'm going to jack off. Wait. And I'm going to jack it to pixels getting screwed over by taxes. And no, I'm not giving the sauce. All right, man. No worries. Keep your secret close to your heart. But appreciate it, man. Have a good night. And this entire series of investigations and sort of political skepticism, it kind of came down to Microsoft buying ZeniMax and Bethesda just a couple years ago. Now, that deal was completed in March of 2021. That was a very, very, very like bonkers freaking transaction. Like truly just to think about the fact that right now, every Bethesda game is all under one big umbrella. So Elder Scrolls, Fallout, even stuff that people don't consider like Doom is a Bethesda product, Wolfenstein, like everything. It just goes on and on and on. Those are all officially Xbox exclusive titles. Now, when you think about it to a government entity who's trying to investigate this, they're probably starting to think, okay, is Microsoft fighting fair? Were they able? Why would they approve the Disney Fox deal? It's entertainment products. It has no impact on people's livelihoods or ability to work or communicate or anything. This is literally a fucking luxury good. No one in the government is going to give a fuck. Do you really think some 70-year-old man working in fucking Washington, D.C. is going to be like, Oh my god, bro, you can't play Starfield on the PlayStation 5. I've got to block this deal. No, they don't give a fuck. <laughs> they probably don't even know what the fucking Xbox is. Like, that's the simple fact. Like, you walk up to most of these senators and be like, Hey, do you like Xbox or play? And be like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> like, really? No, they don't give a fuck about any of this type of shit. They're just doing it because it's a big headline. So I've been chiefing with the five. He still hasn't talked the PlayStation Network employee pulling a mini lad or the sexism accusations at PlayStation. Yong Ye hasn't talked about the. Oh, of course they aren't going to. No, because, you know, Sony good to scoop up this huge chunk of the entire business can people still fight back with their own games their own products well yeah the biggest games in the world were literally started by independent studios i think that this is what's sort of happening now is with this 70 billion dollar acquisition of activision blizzard currently taking place i think the government is basically just saying let's be careful don't just give this a green light don't just stamp it and say it's okay everybody is trying to make sure that this is still fair even if the bungee deal is so much smaller additionally consider the fact that sony has officially said that they want to make sure that bungee stays an independent subsidiary so it seems like they want them to be like a third party studio they're going to make stuff on all platforms but sony gets to keep all that delicious profit 
Now, I have seen a very strange amount of Sony fanboys actually getting very downright mad about this investigation, but I don't think it's really a big deal. Like, the fact that this is happening, I think this is sort of just what the government is considering to be more natural fairness. Like, okay, we're investigating the actions of Microsoft. Let's investigate the actions of Sony. Okay, there's this big transaction happening. Let's look at this big transaction. Like, this is still billions and billions of dollars changing hands. I've seen some people say that it's actually pretty customary for the government to sort of approve any business deal over like a hundred million dollars. Yep, because it makes headlines. That's all it's about. It's just political flexing. See here with the two, I hope all of these buyouts lead to new games. Yeah, we're still waiting for Microsoft to get that shit together, but who knows? And how do I say your name? Agnes? I'm guessing with the five. What's up, gamers? I just beat Dark Souls 2 for the first time. Feeling great. Awesome, man. Congrats. Gaming. Dark Souls 2 is really fucking long. There's a lot of bosses in that game. So here with the two new games from new studios, I mean. Who knows? We'll see, but I don't know. This, like, rollout of video games at this point has gotten so fucking slow. It really sucks. Like, the 360 generation, we were getting, like, a new game from every video game developer, like, every other year. Now it's, like, fuck. Four or five years in between which to me makes sense because this is some very, very big power that's changing hands. Now, to me personally, this seems like such a good sign. And now you guys can tell me in the comments if you disagree, but my whole thing is that competition creates the best product for the customer. If there's a bunch of... Not true. Netflix fucking sucks now because there's more competition in video streaming. Argue with me on that one. Competition does not always result in a better product. Netflix was a better service five years ago than it is today because of all these other fucking streaming services popping up. I will fucking debate anybody on that. I don't know. I think it would be the best situation if all games were just on one console and you didn't have to go out and buy four fucking devices, but hey, that's just me. Midnight Mawile with the two PS5 ain't getting good games this year, or what? I don't know. God of War is supposed to come out by the end of the year, but still no official release date to this day, so we, we'll see. To YouTube videos, I have to try and make the very best YouTube videos so I rise to the top. If it comes to video games, more competition, more pressure, more intensity to try and sell the greatest product creates better video games. Yes, that's right. I still think that even the United States government sort of making sure that people have to play fair to make sure people have to fight. I love that the most. I no. Fuck the U.S. government, bro. Stay the fuck out of businesses. I'm going to say something a little bit anti-Disney. I feel like some corporations inside of the movie industry already have way too much power. The fact that right now... Power? I didn't realize that putting on a Marvel movie gave you power, but okay. There's like 70 different showings of freaking Doctor Strange on every single freaking theater in the world right now. I'm not even hating on Doctor Strange, but I am just saying that right now, Disney has more power than every other freaking studio in Hollywood combined. In fact, Disney owns multiple tinier studios. They own other companies and stuff that make the movies. It, it all goes into one big bank account, and I am afraid of that ever happening inside the gaming industry then don't play video games. Like, I don't go and see Disney movies because I don't like Disney movies. My life has, you know, not really been altered by any great extent, but, you know, I guess that's because I can realize that an entertainment product is not crucial to your survival. 
Who fucking knows, bro? So Jordan with the five, one could argue streaming services got worse because there's too many. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like competition is not necessarily a good thing. It depends. Like competition in streaming services, for example, has made the fucking streaming service industry fucking suck for the end consumer. Plain and simple. Only lads of the five, I would love to play Halo with PlayStation Gamer. Yeah, I agree, man. I think it'd be great if everything was on everything. If we could only, like, if we could just buy one console and play whatever the fuck we wanted to, it'd be perfect. Saying the Madman with the two Dreamcast guys a fed? Probably, bro. You know? That would make a lot of sense. I like that Nintendo's making stuff over here like freaking Kirby and Pokemon, and then over here we have Sony trying to make single-player narrative-driven experiences, and then Microsoft is here doing like first-person shooters and trying to make advanced online games that fit with Game Pass. Everybody is staying in their own. Everybody's trying to copy off each other's homework. Everybody is trying to make good games and hopefully get your good dollars. This just seems like good news. Uh, I know that some people are kind of just being like, oh my God, I can't believe you're investigating Shoney. This is a positive action. This is... No, it's not. It's government overreach. That's the whole point of the FTC is to fuck with businesses. Oh my God, bro. He is a fed. Ew. That's like saying the IRS is a good thing. You know, let's dedicate an entire branch of the government to literally, you know, <laughs> arresting people for not paying their taxes on time. That sounds like a great idea. Wicked Weedle with the two. I'm high. I understand. Crap gamer. I wait. What? What the fuck? I am high. I understand. Crap gamer. I ate edible. What the fuck, bro? Jeez, man. I don't really know how I'm supposed to take that, but all right. He is keeping the fair field fair. I don't think Sony could get blocked. I don't think anybody's going to even try and block this. Jeff Grubb talked about this. Someone said there is quite literally absolutely no way the Sony acquisition of Bungie doesn't get approved. Now, Jeff Grubb says FTC absolutely has the power to screw up deals. But to me, the headline should probably be the Justice Department continues to ignore gaming acquisitions. That's probably correct. They're going to approve as they should with this. It's going to go through. Bungie is pretty much bought and paid for already. It's just a matter of waiting for that freaking ink to dry on the contract. This is just a typical story seeping out as we wait for make big <laughs> while we wait for more games to actually play. But what do you think about this? Is this a positive change? Is this a negative change? Or do you just not care a single poopy? Tell me your thoughts in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a giant thumbs up, share with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. But please do me the biggest favor of all and keep dreaming. Video games! The fuck Thanks was so that? Thanks for watching that video. It Z here with the five. I like how PC works. Anyone can make hardware, but Steam, Epic, or Xbox isn't limited to specific hardware. Truly a gaming platform. Yeah. I don't know. I wish, like, even the fucking launcher situation wasn't a thing, but, you know. Sugar, father. And Jeff with the five. ATF should also be abolished. Yeah, agreed. DEA probably as well. Um. Department of Education, FTC, SEC, um, what's that fucking bullshit? EPA, that should be gone. Um, Homeland Security, I feel like, has way fucking overstepped their bounds. Hmm. What else could we get rid of? There's a lot of shit, bro, honestly. Let's get rid of the fucking, um, the TSA, too. You know, let's stop treating people just trying to get on a fucking plane like inmates in a prison. You know, that'd be a great idea. You don't have to get felt up just to get on a fucking plane.
if you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last or, you know, subscribe and see. Yeah, the NSA, we should get rid of them as well. Facts. Agreed. So this is kind of an interesting video. I watched this earlier today. You guys will have to tell me what you think, but I don't know. I think it gives Quantum TV a lot more credit than he deserves. Skip it up and that up. What's up, everybody? This Get rid of me? Yeah, sure. Let's do it, man. Please. This is, we're just going to call this a surprise episode. That's it. Um, because I wanted to hear my editor, Jay's take on uh, Quantum TV. He's edited about 6,000 videos um, on the guy. And God I know help, he has. God help me. Help me. <laughs> and I'm sure. Yo, that dude has some perky ass nipples in the background. What the fuck? He has plenty to say on this because he's witnessed essentially firsthand all the social media posts and him deleting all the social media posts and YouTube videos and all that. And he won't tell me what he thinks his master. See here, but the two California should be rid of as well. Well, that earthquake may take care of that for you, man plan is. I'm pretty sure I know what he's going to say and then I'll give my take. But I'll give a 30 second synopsis on Quantum TV for the few of you who don't know what the hell's going on. Basically, the guy doesn't like when people have opinions that are different than his. Or shall I say, he doesn't like when people criticize his opinions and he goes about it by uh, abusing the copyright system and other interesting things that he has done, which those are alleged. I can't confirm them. And you would think for a guy who it is confirmed that he's been ban evading, he had another channel called Quantum Apotheosis or something like that, that he would not want to make as big of a stink as he's making. But Jay doesn't completely agree with that. And I want to hear his take as to why he thinks that a guy who it's confirmed that he's been ban evading would be as public and as vocal and crying as much as he is. So... Jay, you have the uh, soapbox here. Let me know what you think is up. So what I think is... So Midnight Mobile with the two get rid of taxes, please. It's bad. We need to at least get rid of income tax. Like, that's the big one. If we get rid of that, everybody's life would be better. And Jordan with the five, is it just me or does Quantum TV's eyes get further apart every time he's... I think Rich edits the photo, but I'm not 100% sure. What is going on here? to explain what I think is going on here, I should say, I need to give slight history on my own personal experience with YouTube and success. Quote unquote, what is successful on YouTube? What does it mean to be successful? Is it actual numbers? Like the amount of numbers you get on your channel? Or is it the amount of reaction you get from your channel and the amount of people discussing your channel? There's two Both. different form. Yeah, there's well, there's two different forms that you could look at, right? So the ultimate goal is to get a lot of views, to get to make money and keep doing it. How do you do that? There's many reasons why people do YouTube. Some people do it just for fun. Some do it as a career, like you and I are doing, which is a hundred percent fine. It's an actual job that we do. This is what I wanted to say on the show because I'm the guy. You send me the footage of this quantum guy. And I'm the guy that has to piece this together and make sure everything's in check. Well, I'm, it you makes know, sense, yeah. makes sense. I'm the editor. Now, from my point of view, which I don't think a lot of your viewers realize, is that I had my own channel. I still do it, which it's totally dead. I'm just be 100% honest here. There's many reasons why my channel didn't really take off the way I wanted it to, mostly because of just my mental state at times didn't allow me to really push forward on that channel. In saying mm, that, I can relate though, to that, but continue. Yeah, totally, you can. So, in saying that, though, there's reasons why Quantum TV is still doing what he is doing, and the main reason for that is this reason: if you are unable to be successful on your own on YouTube, you're doing your channel, and you're not getting. Maybe that picture isn't edited. Now that it's not tilted, it kind of looks normal. I don't fucking know, man. I would have to get confirmation on that one. Latinx is the two. 
This guy really thinks Quantum's playing 4D chess. Yeah, I don't believe it, honestly. I think he's just that... I, I just think he's dumb. Like, he's well-spoken, but he's just extremely stupid. That's my overall opinion on it. I don't think he's playing 4D chess at all. I think he's really just that fucking stupid. Gunslinger with the 5 watched this video earlier and thought it had some good points. Really got me thinking. I don't know if I buy it, to be completely honest. Getting the numbers, you're not getting the reaction you want. I'm gonna ask you, Rich. What like he has a certain level of strategy to him, but I don't think he's capable of thinking that far ahead. What do you do? What's the next step you do if you're the type of person that needs that in your blood system? You need you're you're desperate because maybe you're not getting something at home. Maybe you're not fulfilled. Something is going on in your life that is not fulfilling you, so you need that success. Which way? <laughs> it sounds like the reason why everybody starts YouTube. To be honest, do you turn on YouTube if you can't reach that success with your own abilities? You talk about other YouTubers with bigger followings to get traction to your channel. Yes. So when you get a little taste of that success, you're going to feel like you just had mm. sex for the first time. And why? No. I'm saying these things is it feels better because you get fucking paid no I'm just kidding. yeah but you know I'm being 100% serious getting a fuck ton of views for the first time and seeing that fucking revenue shoot up you know then it's great because quantum TV and I listen I think he's brilliant. I know that you guys out there are going to think, oh my God, Jay's absolutely I don't lost agree with mind. this, but continue. I don't agree, and I'll tell you why, but continue. Listen, I think he's playing a master plan game here because not only is he making money off of this, and not only is he seeing forms of success that he... Yeah, the reason why I don't think the photo would be edited, because technically, if you do edit people's faces, YouTube will come after you and say, like, oh, you're making fun of their appearance. So you actually have to be careful with that type of shit now because of the new um like harassment guidelines or whatever. You can't make fun of like people's um appearance or blah, 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 whatever. So you could perceive like editing a photo of someone to make them look weird as, you know, attacking their fucking appearance. So I don't know. So 6ix9ine Ronin with the 60 months of tier 1. We all like stonk energy like that. Yeah, I agree, man. I agree. He's never seen before on his channel. He is now addicted to that. So it does play into what you're going to say on the side of like he's not as smart as we think he is. I do think he's playing a game and he's always one step ahead. You have to look at what he's done with the Ackman. He's been one step ahead, and even you called that out. You knew that Ackman would react the way he did to him calling his mother. Like, if he called my mother, I'd be livid too. But, as you used to say, don't feed the trolls, Ackman fell right into that trap, said exactly what Quantum TV wanted. He knew he would do that, and he made the reaction videos for 40, what is it, 45 minute pause? I still don't buy that shit. I don't because I don't think because the difference is, is quantum sees nothing wrong with calling someone's fucking mother. So it's not like he goes, oh, I, I'm going to do this just to get a reaction. No, he genuinely thought, oh, that's normal. That's not, I think he's given him a little bit too much credit here. Like, sure, maybe he thought, like, oh, yeah, this will intimidate Actman, and then he'll either say something he'll regret or he'll back off from me. But, you know, I don't think he actually planned it out, like, yeah, I know this is fucked up and everything, but I'll get him to basically, like, yeah, I don't, I don't think it was that. I think Quantum literally thought what he was doing was the rational thing to do. You just looked it up. The photo is not edited. Yeah, I was about to say. It looks, once it like flips like this, it looks more like realistic. It's just that angle he took the fucking photo at. Just makes it look really weird. Podcast where he's just blabbering on about nonsense. He's doing that because he podcast. knows. Podcast. It, it sounds like a manifesto, not a podcast. But yes, I get what yeah, you're exactly. saying. Yeah, exactly. He's got a master plan here because listen, here's where the kicker comes in. 
and what I was going to tell you in the first place. The easiest way to be successful, even if it is a short amount of time, because he's not smart enough to see this, you cannot prolong this nonsense forever. He can get his little kicks out of it for a certain amount of time, but the easiest way to be successful, and Rich, you will admit this, is to troll another bigger YouTuber that doesn't have the ability to understand what's going on in that situation. And Rich, you've said this in the past, and we're just being completely honest. You, I was the one that told you to stop feeding the trolls. Well, you know, you've admitted that live. Oh before. yeah, a billion times, one hundred and ten percent. You were the one. And who listen to this. Me. Those trolls had how many viewers? Like not even a f fraction of what you had. Not even a, a single digit of, above what you like, close to what but you what, had. Yeah, but when I mentioned them, they're they're which was stupid. Their videos would get twenty, thirty, forty thousand views. And there you go. And that you're you've it's literally feeding the trolls. So there's a part of this that is, he didn't get the success he wanted. He's yeah, but Quantum's not a fucking troll. Like, everything this dude says, he genuinely believes. And that's the fucking crazy part. Smart. I've There's no, like, posturing or anything like that. This dude is weird enough to, like, actually believe what the fuck he's talking about. Watch some of his, uh, his videos on reviews. He's not talking out of his ass when he's talking about his technical stuff on his channel. Some of the AV community would disagree with you on that, but okay, well, yeah, he, he sees well spoken. Let's say that. that the, see, well that's spoken. what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. He can put. Listen, he can put. He got 500 more subs. Yeah, and I guarantee you, all 500 of those people are just following, so they know when the fuck he posts his next shit storm of a video. Most of the people following Quantum are not genuinely, like, fans. It's like DSP sub count. Like, it keeps going up. But yet he only gets trolled and trolled more. It's because he keeps banning people from his fucking live streams. It has nothing to do with people actually, like, genuinely liking his content. Put a video together himself. The problem with him is he never saw the success on his own. He never got to that level. So that is why he has turned to the way he has this is a guy who's never seen this much attention on himself there's a reason why he's deleting only negative comments on his channel because he wants to use this in his sick mind as a way to grow his channel he thinks people are going to come in into this not yeah, okay, knowing about what he's that. doing so I agree there's with a that. so i've heard the contrary to that apparently he's like begging his new like members or whatever to go like subscribe to his patreon because he's anticipating his channel gets fucking deleted i've heard that somebody sent me that earlier today that he's like now asking people to sub to his patreon instead of the channel membership so when his channel gets nuked if it does they'll still be able to get into contact with him so i think this shit <laughs> did not play out the way he wanted to if this is really a 4d chess attempt Oh, fuck, bro. I'm going to butcher this. Shit, dude. I don't even know how to say your name. Hold on. Tlokoya? I'm sorry, man. With the 10, just got home from the bar. Saw you streaming. Time to enjoy this. Also bought a 24-pack of hams and a bottle of Jim Bean for tonight. Can I get a gaming? Absolutely, man. And apologies about the name. I am fucking terrible with that type of shit. Gaming. Yeah, there's a reason why he's deleting things, because he wants the TV community to come in there and go, hey, this guy's all of a sudden, you know, I see him in the search for some reason. Let me go check out one of his, his reviews on TV. He doesn't want them to associate him with what he's doing. But listen, he can't help himself. He can't help himself. You just took the words out of my mouth. Continue. The easiest way to get to a youtuber is not to be nice and i know this from fact because oh absolutely you're that you're 110 percent on it, that's yeah. just human nature too so sam the man man with the two i think he's a cult leader as simple as that he would definitely like to be that's for fucking sure he tries to build like a cult of personality around him but i don't know people react to negativity more than positivity which is a strange human trait but it is true well, it's also YouTubers 
react to the negative stuff more than the good stuff. And I'll admit that's even in my own right. And I think you would probably say the same that yeah, you and I. Because negative stuff gets a reaction from people. It's why it's reality shows that people beating the shit out of each other. So Keith of the two, damn it, Griff, learn how to read. I'm sorry, man. I'm illiterate as fuck. Other all the time. Totally. It's like you and I. We've both had pretty success. Well, I mean, your channel has blown past mine. But back in the day, I was decent size and i had some success you know i've got some million viewed videos i know what it feels like to do that and even if i, <laughs> I don't i did a million views and i saw all these comments have i hit a million views on anything i actually don't know i don't fucking check let's see nope rip great video amazing job all this I don't know what it is, man, but just being honest here, sometimes I read those things and I'm just like, thank you. I appreciate that. But it's that one goddamn comment that's like, you fucking suck. And I just, why is this guy doing this? And listen, he doesn't even mean it. And that's what this Quantum TV guy is doing. He doesn't mean lots of this stuff he's doing. Oh, no. Fuck no. Yeah, that's a strong disagree for me on that one. That's a strong disagree on that one. I think quantum TV means every single fucking word he says. He like lies and convinces even himself. You generation of the two, not even a million views irrelevant. Yeah, pretty much, man. I am kind of irrelevant, but it's all good. I'm out here just living life at this point. It's a plan to prolong his success. That's my final sort of theory on what he's doing here. That's all he's doing. And I'll, I'll end it with this too, is that, yeah, you're right, but from a sane person's standpoint, it's still career suicide. Well, because, dude, I never, I never said the guy was sane. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But it, like, the, here is the reality of it, though, is that he's basically... All right, I thought I was going fucking crazy for a second. <laughs> so I keep hearing like these birds in the background like tweeting and shit. It's in Rich's video. I'm like, bro, it's not that late, is it? But no. Oh, wait, fuck, it is outside. Oh, shit, bro. The birds are up and fucking tweeting like in my fucking area. Damn, it's late lighting the <laughs> shit i was hoping that it was the video because typically that's a sign that you know i'm kind of fucked match to set off the bomb that's going to blow up his channel and not blow it up in terms of make it grow blow it up in terms of it's going to get wiped from the internet uh you know what last thing i want to say in this video is thank you quantum tv for basically paying for my everdrive because i'm <laughs> i'm super excited for the everdrive just keep which them coming buddy get? which one I'm I'm going nuts. I'm ordering the versus and the handheld. I'm going nuts. Ever it, cage, you mean ever drive? I'm thinking of the. the oh, sorry, uh, sorry, yeah, card. sorry, not the ever drive. Uh, sorry, I get them confused. I mean the Evercade, the handheld system and the versus system. It's a, it's incredible. I've been watching videos on it. So once again, oh yeah, I have them both. TV. They're fantastic. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna. I haven't used them in a bit. I'm gonna I'm gonna hook them back up. I actually played some games on that on live stream. So. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, th Quantum. Thank you, man. We really appreciate. Bro, I wish I was doing fucking crack. Appreciate what you're doing for the community here in terms of just... It's like the one drug I would try is cocaine. Deadass. I would do it once, that's it. But that's like the one drug I would actually want to try at some point in my life. Driving our numbers up. We, I, I don't mind making videos on you. I appreciate it. We know what game you're playing. I mean, technically, we're playing the game as well. Yes, and we are. Yeah, thank you. Every time I play a game on there, I'll think of him and great thoughts thank you you will think of him breastfeeding you all right so yeah i mean jay he, he makes interesting points you know from i guess from a madman's perspective it's brilliant from a sane youtuber's perspective this would be career suicide but if you're insane already uh quantum tv essentially is playing 4d chess and in his mind he's winning but i think i think that quantum thinks he's winning with everything and refuses to ever say that he's losing all right, guys. Uh, Jay, thank you for coming on, giving your two cents. That was very interesting, especially for the guy who's been editing a ton of videos on this. I'm sure you had a lot to say. And uh, it, I'll it's, be... it's sort of funny, dude. It's sort of funny I wanted you to stop 
doing these videos, but then you were like, listen, we're doing yeah. it. And you explain. Yeah, it's free fucking real estate, man. I don't blame him. Zero with the 10 quantum TV means most of the stuff he says. I don't think he's playing 4D chess, just digging the hole deeper, thinking it's helping, but it's not. Now he's. Wait, his only option is to just keep digging? Yeah, basically. I, don't, I just think, like, he's so delusional, he convinces even himself that he cannot possibly be wrong. Like, he literally has the mentality that admitting he's wrong is worse than fucking death. Explain <laughs> to me why, and I'm like, yeah, Yeah, this makes because sense. It, it was during the live streams. I, good point. I almost forgot to mention this. People were like, Rich, Quantum TV, you got to talk about this. You got to talk. I'm like, I did say final video, and then, but it's like, there's a lot of crap going on. Why the hell would I stop talking about it? I, I exactly. didn't realize this. I did not realize when I said my milk that motherfucker dry. My final video in that thumbnail. I really thought it was going to be my final video. I knew it was nuts, but I didn't know it was the level of insanity that was going to ensue when I made that thumbnail. So that wasn't like a clickbaity thumbnail. I meant it. But then he went full on even more insane. So there you go. All so right, you guys. Know what? What's up? I just got to add this. Quantum TV, the birds need two perms, so drop another video, man. We need that money. Yeah, yeah drop drop another video and bring up some more insane conspiracy theories that make no sense. I could also people love to watch it during live stream, so we could double dip. And I'm going to kiss a bird right now to salute you. I wish I could kiss you and the bird. Uh, the, dude, I'll, I'll get you a plane ticket right now. All right, guys. Thank you so much for coming through. Jay, thank you for coming through to give your two cents, and I will see you in the next video. Have a good one. Yeah, I don't think the fucking, like, 4D chess argument is correct. I don't think Quantum is that intelligent. I'd like to... I could see that Quantum thinks he's that intelligent to be able to do something like that. But from an outsider's perspective, he's definitely not smart enough to do it. Now his career is just beginning. The Lulk arc has begun. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens after Medicare covers it. We'll see if um his fan base latches on to Quantum once it brings attention to a new audience of people who love particular individuals on the internet. The views are going to, what, go bye-bye? Yeah, I think so. Because before this whole thing, his videos were getting, like, what, 2,000 views apiece or something? It was really low. He was barely even breaking 5K, I think. I don't fucking know, man. Yeah, Medicare's covering it tomorrow night on stream. He mentioned it last week on stream. So, yeah. Yep, it will be covered on Medicare stream. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes for Quantum. Are they the same people that troll Chris Chan? Yeah, it's kind of the same kind of audience. <clears throat> I don't fucking know, man. It's It'll be interesting. I'm definitely going to watch it. So, to LaCoya, I'm sorry if I said that wrong again, man, with the Tier 2 membership. Big ups, appreciate it, sir. I don't know, man, but it's four. The birds are singing. I think I'm going to go to sleep. I wasn't really planning on staying on long tonight anyway, so this is kind of just spur of the moment. So, I'm going to head off. I'm going to go to sleep, 